I just had a wonderful idea. You're sending Wesley to Afghanistan. <laughs> You've been here for five years, and you'll probably be with us another five. What? Uh, so I'm redecorating your room. What? Oh, don't worry. It will be tasteful and charming, I promise. Well, just look what I did with Kevin's old room. You mean putting in a giant screen TV and painting the windows black? Real sentimental, Mom. I appreciate your good intentions, Mrs. Owens. But where do I sleep? Well, there's an extra bunk in Wesley's room. Hey, look what I traded my accordion for! <laughs> hi, Ed. Hi, Ed. You ready for school? Almost. I'm reading up on current events. Oh, I knew a current event once. But that was years ago. <laughs> speech club. You're joining the speech club? Yeah, to learn how to express myself better and become more articulate. Okay. Who's the guy? There is no guy. You know, maybe I'll join the speech club, too. You? Well, don't act so shocked, Heather. I'm really good at expressing myself. <laughs> oh, hi, Angela. Oh, Mrs. Owens. Uh, my parents... Uh, well... <laughs> Vacation. It's okay, honey. Your mother already called. You can stay here. <laughs> Just think, I'll be living here all week. Isn't that great, Mr. Blowhole? <laughs> Wonderful. With your moving in and my bunking with Wesley, it'll be a dream come true. <laughs> is illegal immigration? I thought you said illegal irrigation. An easy mistake. Should I start over? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I tell you what, why don't we hear from one of our more experienced speakers, uh, Marvin. Marvin, your topic will be health care in the United States. Go. Health care. Many Americans cannot get or afford the medical care they need. Conservatives propose slashing public health care programs. Liberals want to pour billions of dollars into national health insurance. In my opinion, we should encourage insurance companies to pay for preventive medicine and establish a decentralized delivery system of public health care. Thank you. Boy, he's really good. Yeah, and he's cute too, in a geeky sort of way. Excellent, Marvin. Thank you. See you all next time. Watch this. I'm going to go introduce myself. I'm Heather. You know, that was a really good speech. Oh. Oh, I gotta go to the bathroom. Well, you know what they say. All brain and no bladder. Night, Mom. Night, Dad. Mr. Belvedere? Was that for? I wanted to strike first before you unleashed whatever fiendish prank you were planning. Well, I guess you got me. <laughs> I'm going to bed. Well, Wesley, if we're going to be bunk mates, I mean, we might as well make the best of it. I guess so. I'll get the lights. 
Are you asleep, Wesley? No. Would you like a little entertainment? Huh? Back by popular demand. Sir Rodney Rabbit. Hello, Sir Rodney. Oh. <laughs> Good afternoon, speakers. Why don't we begin today with a practice debate on the subject of nuclear disarmament? Who would like to take the pro position? Heather. And opposing? Marvin. Heather, your opening statement. Well, I think we have enough nuclear weapons in this world. I mean, how many times can we blow ourselves up? All it is is a big waste of money, which we could put into social programs to help humanity. Thank you. Peace. <laughs> Who among us doesn't want peace? The question, of course, even to the most naive, is how to achieve peace. <laughs> And in conclusion, I say, strength, power, these are the guardians of liberty, the protectors of this grand experiment we call democracy. Thank you. <laughs> Anything to add, Heather? I give. <laughs> See you all next time. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you know, you sure mopped up the floor with me. I'm sorry. Bye. Well, you know what? You're so good, I could sure use a few pointers from you. How about tomorrow after school, my house? You mean your house? Where you live? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, sure. Why not? Oh. <laughs> Gosh, he's so shy, except when he's debating. It's like he's two different people. Yeah, like Clark Kent and Batman. <laughs> so, you want a soda? I never drink carbonated beverages before a debate. Uh, me neither. <laughs> so, do you have a girlfriend? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, I'm on the debate team, varsity towel boy, and president of the chess club. I don't have much time for girls. Well, we're not all that time consuming. Frankly, I think it's me. In case you didn't notice, I'm kind of awkward. Well, maybe you just haven't met anyone you feel comfortable with. I like girls. I'm just never sure how to ask them out. Oh, that's easy. I mean, let's take a hypothetical situation. Say you were asking me out. <laughs> you? Uh-huh. Well, what would you say? <laughs> I don't know. Well, just say, would you like to go out for a pizza and maybe see a movie tonight? Oh, slow down. This is good stuff. <laughs> anyway, chances are the hypothetical person would say, I'd love to. Hi, Marvin. Hi. Uh, Angela, we were kind of in the middle of something. Oh, okay. <laughs> Say, Angela, before you go. Uh, would you like to get a movie and, and maybe see a pizza tonight? <laughs> I'd love to. <laughs> You're a genius. <laughs> Oh, we couldn't find anything with the G rating, so we went bowling instead. You know, once you get to know Marvin, he's pretty neat. Even sexy. There was a moment when he got his thumb stuck in the ball and I was trying to help him get it out. And our bodies became completely intertwined. Well, then what happened? He had an asthma attack. Gee, too bad. You know, I never would 
would have met Marvin if I hadn't joined the speech club. And I never would have joined if you hadn't joined. Boy, talk about destiny, huh? Talk about density. <laughs> In conclusion, freedom of speech is one of our most cherished rights and must never be taken for granted. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. You've just earned a spot on the debate team for this Saturday's speech meet against Fielding High. That's all for today. Um, Angela, could I see you for a second? Hey, that's great about you making the team. Oh, thanks, Marvin. <laughs> and thank you. Angela has changed my life. Marvin, you went bowling together once. The thing is, Angela has brought me out of my shell. I can talk to her just like I'm talking to you. Well, now that you can talk to me, why don't you ask me out? Huh? Well, it just so happens I have two tickets to a special taping of Firing Line from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Gee, that sounds tempting, but... I kind of had plans on going to the library with Angela. William F. Buckley's debating Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Well, the library will always be there tomorrow. <laughs> Mr. Wiggins took me out of impromptu speaking and made me a scorekeeper. Says I'm a natural. <laughs> well, now that you're keeping score, it's one to one. <laughs> See you later, Marvin. To you. I got Mr. Belvedere as our roommate. There's no reason to foam at the mouth. He's just, he's doing all these dumb gags like I'm still eight years old or something. So what are you gonna do? Nothing. Well, Mom's finishing his stupid room tomorrow. The nightmare is over. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hello. Oh, Mr. Belvedere, about your room. That Laura Ashley motif just didn't work out, so I'll need a few more days. Huh? Oh, oh. Take as long as you need, right, Rumi? <laughs> Come on, I'll help you get that shaving cream off. Morning. Oh, you got in kind of late last night. Have a nice time. Great. <laughs> Can I interest you ladies in some scrambled eggs? No, no thanks. Juice? And grenades? <laughs> Look, Angela, I can't help it if Marvin wanted to go out with me. He had a date with me, and you made him break it. Angela, don't be such a sore loser. <sighs> this isn't over yet, sister. Excuse me. <laughs> this Marvin must be some guy. to review for the debate. So did I. Well, you don't have to review. You're scorekeeper. Uh, we can work together. I'll review with Heather. Then you can score with me. <laughs> I mean, uh, the debate. Right. Oh, gosh, where's my head? I left my topic file out in the car. Be right back. I'm gonna go get some root beer. He loves soda. I want to get it. Angela, wait! downstairs. <laughs> Got it. Where's Angela? Uh, she went out for some air. Why don't we start without her? What's that? Uh, my dad has a workshop downstairs. Just ignore it. He could be pounding all night. <laughs> Hey, uh, 
There's a card in here on me. I know that one best. <laughs> Hold that thought. <laughs> Good, you're back. Where's Heather? Ah, uh, she's uh, tied up for a while. <laughs> but I thought we were going to review. Well, I guess for now it's just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, how in the hell did this happen to you? Someone threw it on me. Hey, this looks like that old fish netting from the basement. Wes! <laughs> well, what do you say we start? Okay. No. Angela, I thought you liked me first. Well, who cares? Ask him what he likes now. Well? I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> At home. Oh. Hi, how are you doing? Hold on a minute, Cindy. I've gotta call Mr. Belvedere. Don't mind me. I'll see what the three little piggies are up to. You know, I'm, uh, working on getting my locker moved next to yours. Cindy and Wesley sitting up a tree. K-I-S-S-I-N-G. Just ignore that. Yeah, I did my math homework. Problem seven? Uh, hold on a sec. Cindy, but I didn't do it. Cindy? Hello? Now look what you did! What? I've had it up to here with your stupid games and practical jokes. But I thought you were enjoying yourself. I know I am. Well, I'm not, you, you oversized candy cane. Yes, you've made that quite clear. Can't you just leave me alone? By all means. I'll not be patronized by you any longer. You humorless little snot! Hi, Marvin. All ready for the debate? Oh, God, it's you. Hi. Oh, God, it's her. What are you doing here? Uh, Beverly Clark has mono, and everyone else has entered another event, so Mr. Wiggins put me in. And that's the last thing I'm going to say to you for the rest of my life. <laughs> By the way, you're ugly. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to today's debate between Fielding High and our own Van Buren speech masters. <laughs> the topic for today's debate is in an era of serious national debt. Can we preserve the social security system? Van Buren, having won the toss, will go first and defend the pro position. Social security. Yes, it is expensive and it will get more expensive, but whatever the cost, we must preserve it. He's right. It's like working really hard for something or someone and your best friend waltzes in and takes away what's rightfully yours. Or you have it, and the next thing you know, your so-called best friend tries to steal it. I object. This isn't supposed to be tag-team debating. Please, Heather, Angela. Oh, shut up! <laughs> Speechmasters, you're supposed to be debating them. Well, maybe we would be if he'd make up his mind. Yeah, this is all his fault. Look, you're driving me crazy. I can't take it anymore. I appreciate everything you two have done for me, but you're just too intense. I'm going to go find a nice, quiet girl without a best friend. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Wiggins, I guess we kind of made fools of ourselves, and I'm really sorry we embarrassed the school. Yeah, what can we do to make it up to you? Join the skydiving club. <laughs> this was the most humiliating experience of my life. 
Worse than the time you were talking to Chad Smith and I made a face behind his back and you laughed and chocolate milk came out of your nose? <laughs> Angela, we made fools of ourselves over a guy. Where did you see in him anyway? I don't know. What did you see in him? I guess we wanted to want him so bad that we wanted to want him just to want him. I mean, we got cut up in the competition for him. Yeah, that too. Well, let's promise never to do that again. Promise. <laughs> Excuse me. Would you like to go out for a pizza and maybe see a movie tonight? We have to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Room's still not ready yet, huh? Your mother promised it for tomorrow. I guess we could have avoided all this if I'd been honest with you from the beginning. Yes? Well, it would have been reassuring from the start to know how much you despise me. I don't despise you. It's just... When you came here, I was only eight. Now I'm twelve. That's odd. I've aged thirty or forty years. <laughs> you know what I mean. I'm not that little kid anymore. The one that plays dumb practical jokes. I know. It's just that sometimes I miss the old days. Me too. Life was simpler then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, no hard feelings? None at all. You know, it's, it's nice that you're maturing a little. Temporarily displaced, I'm forced to record my journal entry where I can find a moment's peace. Wesley and I have reached an understanding about his emerging maturity, although I dare not let my guard down since he seems prone to relapse. <laughs> and as for Heather and Angela, their friendship seems to have endured love and war. And as for my room, well, that's anyone's guess. <laughs> Ready to sneak a peek? Actually, I am a bit curious. Well, I'm all done. Go ahead, take a look. <laughs> I'm not sure about the wallpaper. Tonight on Nightline, the tragedy that struck United Flight 811. It's hardly an isolated event. Ted Koppel looks at the crisis of confidence surrounding the airline industry.